Start off with a joke. Um, why are accountants <laughs> always calm, cool, and collected? Uh, because they have strong internal controls. Next slide, please. Oh, no. We have to introduce ourselves. Right. Wait, let's introduce um, I'm Alex. Which group are you guys? What number? Uh, group three. 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 I'm Alex. I'm Julie. All right, I'm Jackson. I'm Michael. I'm Jake. And uh, we're doing our project on Telltale. All right. All right, so starting off with a quick ratio, the formula is current assets minus inventory minus prepaid expenses all over current liabilities. So it decreased from 0.97 to 0.65, which is about a decrease of 0.32. And the quick ratio is the amount of liquid assets per dollar in current liabilities. The, they had less liquid assets in 2020 than they did in 2019, which is a bad thing. Um, a good quick ratio is any number over one, so their ratio obviously is not very good. Um, this ratio relates to total debt over total, to total assets because they both represent the company using their assets to pay for their liabilities. And the next one is total asset turnover, which is net sales over <coughs> average total assets. It increased from 0.24 to 0.41 in 2020. This ratio means that for every dollar in assets, Delta generated 41 cents in 2021. Their increase was caused by higher net sales in 2020, and it's a good thing because they generated more sales per assets in 2020 than they did in 2019. The goal for most total asset turnover ratios is somewhere between 0.25 and 0.5. So that means this is a pretty good ratio, especially since they came up from the previous year into this ratio. Um, and we related this ratio to return on total assets because both compare some portion of the revenue to average total assets. <clears throat> All right, so the next uh, ratio used was accounts receivable turnover, which is net credit sales divided by average net accounts receivable. This basically shows how quickly uh, credit gets turned into cash for most of these companies, meaning the quicker the customers pay back the company, Delta, the more their turnover happens. So from 2019 to 2020, it increased from 8.04 to 15.74, which means they're more loyal and customers who paid off their debt quicker, meaning the company was able to convert cash um, convert um, credit debt to cash quicker. This is usually due to, uh, from 2019 to 2020, there's a higher uh, revenue for more credit sales and more customers paid off, meaning they have more loyal customers from 2019 to 2020. And then inventory turnover, um, the formula is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. And in this instance, we did it for the fuel cost. And this shows how quickly the inventory gets turned over during like a periodic, uh, uh, for each period or basically each year. So usually the higher sales and uh, the less inventory give you a higher number. So from 2019 to 2020, it decreases 8.42 to 8.12. This is usually bad for the company because it means it had too much inventory and um, not enough sales so the more that the it had too much inventory basically meaning it overestimated what it was going to make in 2020 compared to 2019 so the do better they should probably um estimate uh to make a little bit less next time and not order as much inventory so the inventory ratio goes higher um, so next is our total debts to total assets ratio, uh, and the formula is total liabilities divided by total assets. Um, in the years that we studied between 2019 and 2020, um, in, in 2019 it initially started at 97.87% of uh, total, total debts to total asset ratio, which is pretty good. But in uh, 2020 it declined to a 94.64%, which is almost a 4% decrease in assets, but a 4% increase in debts and liabilities that the company owes. Uh, most of it's obviously due to COVID and the impact that airlines and airports had with closing down. But um, honestly, it actually turned out that they did consume some amount of income during those times and did generate a little bit of money, but obviously it did not outweigh
the debts and the costs they did to own the property, own the airplanes, own all the the assets that go into maintaining and all these airplanes. And uh, but they did save some money on staffing issues and all that stuff. So overall, uh, the four percent decrease in assets and income and revenue uh, definitely turned out to be a negative for the company. So for time interest earned, <clears throat> the equation is net income plus inter interest expense plus income tax expense all over interest expense. And it's basically measuring how many times you can pay off is your rate of interest within a given year. And so in 2020, the, uh, the ratio was 1.47. In 2019, it was thir negative 13.42. And so from 2019 from 2020, it, it was an increase at about four, uh, by approximately 14. And although it was a good increase, and it was favorable for the company, the ratio is still not near the, uh, the ideal ratio, which is 2.5. And so essentially, this shows that the, confident, the, the company is operating is reasonably well. Um, Delta is, is paying off, I guess, its operating expenses. In addition, it's a strong indicator of Delta's future ability to increase its borrowings, as they do appear to be on an upward trajectory after the, uh, the initial, I guess, hit of the pandemic. Because although they're still suffering and they're still trying to trend upwards and recover, uh, they're still you know, not at the ideal ratio is not meeting its standards. And so for net profit margin, it, it's just net income over net sales. And 2020, it was 0.94%. In 2019, it was a lowly negative 72.45%. And from 2019 to 2020, it increased about 73%. Although ideal, for it's an ideal increase, it still doesn't meet the bar, it's not really even close. Because the average is around 10%, and a good ratio is about 20. And so basically, after the pandemic, uh, revenues nearly doubled. Um, it is oper in, I guess, while operating expenses slightly improved. Although it is a good thing, um, the company is becoming more profitable and it's holding its own after the difficult circumstances, it still needs to continue to improve in order to become profitable and therefore I guess, put more money and invest into the company. And then for our last uh, ratio, it's a uh, return on total assets, which is net income, which is uh, revenue minus expenses, divided by average total assets, which is that year, the year previous, um, add together, and then divided by two. So for 2019, we had a negative 17.20%, which is actually really, really bad. And for 2022, or for 2020, we had a 0.39%, which it went up, but it was still like extremely terrible in the year before, probably because of the pandemic, something happened before. But, uh, Um, these are kind of just like our questions of concerns and ratios that stood out to us that are definitely like negative or a couple are negative but some of them benefit the company in the long run it's obviously starting with the total debts total assets there never should a company have let their debts and liabilities uh outweigh their or their assets because it's kind of just running itself into the ground um and we we're also wondering why the return on total assets was a negative uh, 17.2 and not 18 percent uh when when you can just combine the two previous years, it actually benefits the company. And then it also was uh, that obviously the company had less assets in 2020, uh, which is definitely a negative impact on the company. That's it. Okay. Is that it? Yeah.